Hey guys, Prangle Gaming here. Welcome back to Talk the Balls, the 26th installment. And before we get right into any of your responses and questions you may have had, if you haven't seen any of the other 25 installments, then why not go check them out? There is going to be a link in the description of this video for the last Talk the Ball, or you could access the playlist by clicking the i button to check out anything you may have missed. But as always, if you have any questions or opinions, do feel free to put them in the comments section of this video because I want a Millwall voice right now. And also, while you're down there, put your score predictions for the Gillingham match, which is at home against one of our rivals, Gillingham, on Friday. I'm so looking forward to that match. And also, the away game to AFC Wimbledon on the Monday. Put that in the comments section and we'll judge you by how well you predict on those ones. And why not, while you're down there, add what you felt went right and wrong in those games. Now, do bear in mind for this one, I recorded it on the Tuesday, which is different to the day I usually record it, which would be the Monday. So, if any new news stories do actually come out, out. And if any of the stuff that I do say does become outdated, then do bear in mind that I'll cover that next week. Or all I can say is you get my sincere apology. Now, before we get into any of your predictions, would you guys like me to do a special talk to wall, which would be in an addition to this week's or next week's, depending on when I actually decide to make it. Now, what this would be is it would break down how I think the team has done with each individual player, and then I would name the team that I think has been the best so far. It's just something additionally, let's just see where I think the team's at at the moment. You can then comment on that, let me know how you think the team's doing, how each player is doing, and we can slowly but surely filter them through in the next couple of episodes. Now, on to your predictions for the last two matches. Those, of course, being against Charlton Athletic in that derby game, which was again on the Wednesday. That was a fantastic game. Great atmosphere. And so, we also played another one, which was against Swindon, but I'm not going to cover that till later on. Now, so let's start with the one against Charlton. And, well, two of you got the score predictions right for this one. Those of you being Alici and Alfie's wet game. And now, Alfie also added that he thought Morrison has to play ahead of Harry Smith in his opinion. And that was due to the fact it was against Cholton. And it would be a tough fought out game and Morrison would do better dealing with the pressure on the fans and knowing the rivalry of the clubs more as he's played through so many of the derby games between us in the past. And to be honest, I would say that most of you have got to agree with this. I certainly agreed with this. Mr. Millwall himself would have to play in this game. He was a fantastic player for every derby game he had played so far. And well, in this one, he didn't really disappoint, did he? Let's be honest, he was fantastic in the game. And well, can I just say congratulations to the two of you for predicting the scoreline right with that one. The next closest was Harry CD, who was off by a Cholton goal as he almost got the scoreline right. Right. He said that we'd win 3-0 and obviously he didn't expect that goal from Nicky Yose. He also added, for those that don't know, it's been over 20 years since Charlton last beat us. So hopefully we can continue that with a win. Now, I'd just like to point out that it's now been 21 years. No need to brag, but I thought I'd point it out for you guys. The next closest scoreline to actually be predicted was by four people that actually included me. And that was a scoreline ending 2-1 to Millwall. Now, the people that said this scoreline were of course me, Tunbridge Fan TV, Ray Generation and Ronnie Temple. And well, I'm going to be honest that uh, I'm pretty gutted with this one because the only time I don't go with my gut instinct of going 3-1 every single time, it goes ahead and gets 3-1. Never mind though, I got the scoreline wrong still. Now the second to last score prediction was by Jadams and he said that the score would end 2-0 to Millwall. He also added that this game would be a hard match for both sides and well, it was a must win for Millwall. We couldn't lose this game, which I couldn't agree more to be honest. It really was a game that we'd had to go and we'd have to win against Charlton, especially given how long we're unbeaten against them. Now, three people predicted the final score and those people were Joe Holloway, Red Army TV Vlogs and Joe Conway. They said that the score would end up going to be 1-1 in the end. Joe Holloway added the scorers of the match, saying that he thought Smith would get a goal in the 45th minute. Had Smith played, maybe that might have happened. And then Lookman would get a goal in the 89th minute. Now, Lookman didn't get those, so both scorers and the times of the goals were actually wrong. And well, he was quite close with saying that the 45th minute would be when Millwall scored, as Millwall got a goal in the 40th minute and then again in the 42nd minute. So overall, not too bad for that prediction. 
So that was against Cholton, but what about the score predictions for the game against Swindon Town? And well, a number of you actually got the score actually right for this game. Those being Red Army TV Vlogs, Harry CD and Alfie's Wet Game. And they all said that the scoreline would end 2-0 with the Lions winning. Can I just say a special congratulations to Alfie's Wet Gaming for getting both of the score predictions right. When he actually saw it, he said spot on. And I've got to say, it was great to see him get both of them right. And I hope it can continue into the next talk to wall. We're obviously getting the Gillingham score right and then the one against AFC Wimbledon. Gabriel Townsend was the next closest person, but he did expect Swindon to score. And that's the reason he obviously didn't get his score prediction right. He thought the score would end 2-1 which to be fair is justified Mill don't keep very many clean sheets and at the moment it was a surprise to actually see us keep one in that game the next predictors were two people and well they both agreed with me and that was for the score line to end 3-0 now obviously we were all one goal short that's again not the best but these things happen I got one goal off again now the two people that predicted it were Tunbridge Fan TV and Liam Gaming both expected the scoreline to end the same way and well Liam went ahead and added that he expected Lee Gregory and Nane O'Brien to score and also said that Fred would grab the other goal he also added Mel. now over to the predictions that were wrong by more than one goal and that would be Joe Holloway with his zero vote of confidence for Millwall saying that Swindon would win 2-0. What are you doing there, mate? 2-0? Well, I guess you're all entitled to your own opinion. Now, Ray Generation said that the score would end up finishing 1-1, but to both, someone would have a similar scoreline predicting with the prediction of a draw, and that would be Joe Conway. He said it would end 0-0. I hate boring 0-0 draws, and well, if that had happened, I would have been very disappointed with the game. Now, let's move on to some extremely big scoreline predictions. And well, Ronnie Temple was the first to give a huge prediction. And he said that Millwall would win 4-1. Well, that would have been a decent game to watch. But unfortunately, that wasn't the score. And the same goes for the next person, which was the final person to predict. And that was Jadams. He said the scoreline would end 4-2 to Millwall. Again, another huge scoreline with that one there. Now, on to your comments, and the first person to ask a number of questions and say a few comments was Liam Gaming. So, I will answer them one by one, and the first question was, do you think we will beat Charlton, and do you think we need a new striker? And to that I say, I fully expected Mill to beat Charlton, because... That's the one thing that Mill tend to do. No matter how bad our season goes, we always beat Cholton. Well, that's the seemingly way it seems to go at the moment. And well, as for the other question, I really do think Mill will need another striker. And hold out before you start complaining, saying, oh, we don't need another striker. We need an experienced one. And by that, I mean someone that's under the age of 28. That's going to be hard to find, obviously. But if I was the manager, that would be the thing I was doing. Because if you look at it this way, Morrison can't play every game. Despite playing the full match against Charlton, but I really do think adrenaline got him through that one. And well, when he does turn up to a game, I do think that Morrison's great. But he can't play every single game. And I really do think that his age is starting to show in some of the games. And well, the other player that is obviously one of our strikers there. Well, he's not really one of my favourites at the moment, and that's Lee Gregory. I still don't think he's one of our better strikers, and I still think that he shows some bad signs. Now, what I mean by that is, well, he shows signs of what younger strikers do, and that means with his naivety. He doesn't know when to strike the ball all the time, and yes, he did score a couple of goals, and he can score goals, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he can't do that, but... In my opinion, for a striker that scored that many last season, he should be scoring them week in and week out, really. Now, that's just my opinion. And, well, I kind of feel that Gregory doesn't look the same in confidence terms. Now, I really can't put my finger on exactly what it could be. It could be confidence. It might be something else. But I, I just don't know. Obviously, Lee Gregory would be the only player to know that. Perhaps it's just me thinking that way. But it just doesn't seem to be the same striker as last season. Liam's second comment was Steve Morrison's song which was oh Steve Stevie Steve 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 Stevie Morris
Morrison. Nice song to hear, and we were singing a lot of that against Charlton, weren't we? Liam's next point of call was to ask, on my opinion, do I think that Lee Gregory will be going in January? And to be honest, this is a tricky one. Now, I wouldn't expect this to happen, but maybe deep down he wants to leave. And when he made that jokey thing, which he said that he wouldn't be leaving and all those sort of things when he laughed it off and everything, maybe that was just to the fact that he knows that Millwall fans are brutal. And, well, I don't know. I think that Gregory likes it at the club, but he only likes it when he's scoring, really. Because, I'm going to be honest, fans can really hurt a player emotionally. Especially when they're not performing and scoring the goals that they need to be. But my answer would still stand to be, I'd be very shocked if he did leave. He really seems to get on all right at Millwall. And I'm going to be honest, if he did leave, I'd be really surprised. Because he seems to be doing okay. Liam's final comment was another song, and that was your defense. Defense is terrified. Morrison's on fire. And I wish I could sing the rest of the song, but I'm going to be honest, I have a cold. This is torture singing songs. Elite She was the next person and he said that Harry Smith is awful. He doesn't even compare to Steve Morrison and Lee Gregory. Now, to this I say everyone is allowed their own opinion there. And I think you may have stirred something up by me even mentioning this comment. But... I've got to say that I don't think Harry Smith is that bad. I'm going to be honest. Now, that's due to the fact that I've just told you how I feel about Mill's strike force at the moment and not really liking Gregory and Morrison. I'm thinking he's getting a little bit too old. But that being said, Harry Smith has struggled and he's obviously got a lot to learn. But you've got to remember that his first few games playing football for an actual professional team was for us. So it's really hard to say whether he's going to be good or not. I'm going to be honest, but for now, just see how he goes. The next person to comment was Tunbridge Fan TV, and he said, come on, Charlton. And I've got to be honest, mate, you better be careful before you say those things around this sort of area. Now, in all seriousness, I'm joking. I couldn't be bothered if someone came in here and said, come on, West Ham, come on, Charlton, come on, Jill and it, it don't really matter. I'm going to be honest. This is what makes this podcast so interesting to me. You're all entitled to your own opinions, and, well, I like to see your interesting opinions it's all good to see different things some of you like tony craig some of you don't some of you like williams some of you don't that's the sort of things that happen and i'm really interested to hear your opinions especially on things like that jadams was the next person to comment and well do bear with me this is a long one so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go ahead and say it and then we'll talk about it afterwards so Jadam said Hutchinson looked like a great player at Scunthorpe. If he can stay fit, we've got ourselves an amazing centre-back with Byron Webster. Call me mad, but I don't think that Tony Craig has done anything wrong. He's been solid recently and people are blaming him for stuff they didn't even do. Also, I like Fergie as he puts in a lot of great crosses, tracks back. However, some fans don't like him. And finally, Wild should leave as he's never going to get into the squad. Too many players are in front of him. He also said sorry for the long comment and great video now before i say anything alfie's wet gaming responded saying i agree apart from ferguson as midfielder he doesn't have enough skill at or pace in his opinion and he'd rather play aiden o'brien on the left so what do i think of this one well i'm actually really loving the center back partnership of hutchinson at the back and well with webbo there i just think that that is a fantastic partnership they're both strong they're both pretty tall it's a pretty decent partnership now that does cast a shadow over the future of joe martin i don't know what would happen to him to be honest i don't know really if he's going to have much of a future if those two actually hit it off and do fantastic at the back now maybe he could play left midfielder I don't really know whether that's going to be possible though but he seems to have a pretty good defensive partnership and by that I mean Neil Harris as he's got two relatively tall and relatively strong defenders and I think that the only issue is obviously with Joe Martin being taken out of the team and Craig going to left back and I'm gonna be honest with Tony Craig I think he did go for a spell where some of his performances really did play into the fans that didn't really like him but I'm not gonna lie I've really liked Tony Craig 
and he's really been a pretty good captain. I'm not going to lie, I've, I've liked his performances. He's not the worst player I've ever seen in a position, and I just think that maybe we're using him too much as a scapegoat, I'm going to be honest. Now, I think that the left-back position suits him a bit more than playing centre-back. That's just because you have to be more physically aware when you're playing as a centre-back, and well, Hutchinson and Webster seem to have that down to a heartbeat at the moment. Now, I don't really mind Shane Ferguson, but to be honest, I am really struggling to see what he does for the team. I know he's a great versatile player, but he is small, so he cannot always beat the man. And well, that is just something that a midfielder has to do. So I know that Ferguson does add something, but in my opinion, I just, I don't know. I like Ferg I do like Ferguson, but he's a bit small of a player. If he was a little bit taller, a little bit more muscly, then I think that he'd be a guaranteed starter. But I just I wouldn't start him every game just due to the fact he doesn't always have the right materials for the game. And as for the final comment part which was about Greg Wilde I make you right on that one and I do really think that he should leave permanently because that would suit both parties more than him just leaving alone. But you know, it's one of these things that it really could be a big issue if Wilde doesn't go and he stays. Because we've then got a footballer there that wants to play football, that's not getting his opportunities, and he had the option to go out and he hasn't. Well, in all chances, I expect him to at least go out alone, I'm going to be honest. Ronnie Temple was the next person to comment and he said, I believe Harris is the right man for the job and I can see him at the club for the foreseeable future. He also ended with Mel, which is again great to see. Now, the thing is with Harris, he's just gone ahead and won one of the most important games of the season, which is obviously that big one against Cholton. So fans are going to like him more just for that fact. Now, I can understand why people would be calling for his head because you want an improvement in football and especially in a club that did pretty well last season. And to be honest, in footballing terms, we've been pretty similar to last season, which it isn't the best. I'm going to be honest. You want to improve every season. And well, if you're just going to be doing the same, then what's the point? I, I get I get why you guys would say we don't want him here. But the thing is, the way we're going, it's not the worst thing. We could still get the automatic promotion with a couple of wins. We could be right in the title race. It's not a problem. I don't think it should be even a problem, even if we don't go up. I really don't think that us struggling to go up or not, it shouldn't matter too much. I mean, to be honest, I'd prefer if we didn't go up this season because I'm going to be honest, I don't like the championship. I start, I'm start. i really starting to think it's coming as commercialised as the Premier League and it could be a big problem. It could ruin us if we go straight up and straight down. It could be a big issue and I don't know whether I want that to happen to Millwall. I'm going to be honest. We need to go there when we're financially stable enough, which is never going to happen. Alfie's Wet Gaming was the next person to say something and what he said was, in my opinion, Romeo has been one of our best players this year by miles. So, with Cummins coming back, he will either play or he'll be sold in January. I also heard that West Ham want Romeo. That would be horrible to let him go, especially to them. Now, this is what I think about Marlon Romeo. I personally think he's been poor because he's basically been handed the position he's in. He doesn't need to work hard to have that position. He's a guaranteed starting right back. Now, I know quite a lot of you will disagree with me on that, but the way you see it is... He's young, he's playing a lot of first team football because there isn't no one to challenge him. Now Cummins has just come back from his injury and I think that Cummins, it could be great for him to come back because it will then give Marlon a bit of challenging and I think that that will improve Marlon and Cummins, as he's come back, he's been pretty good so far. So I'm liking the look of Cummins and I think that Marlon needs to challenge for that place now. Cummins is the more experienced member. Start Cummins, have Marlon challenge him for it. If Marlon's good, then Marlon will get it back. And well, I just think that It'd be sad to see him leave if he does go. I don't expect Marlon to go to West Ham especially, but it'd be interesting. I think that Cummins versus Marlon will be the thing that we need to do, and I think that Harris has noticed that now. Harry CD gives our second to last comment of the podcast, and he says people definitely need to calm down about wanting to sack Harris and being negative. I checked the table, and this time last year, we had three points more, and we have that game in hand. So we're basically in the same position as last year, which doesn't sound too bad to me. But to be fair enough, we should be aiming for the automatic promotion places. Um, well, personally, I think this isn't a problem. Three points off of the playoffs now after beating Cholton. 
it doesn't look too bad, does it? And, well, I can understand why you'd be angry when we were lower down in the league table. But this league, it's really close. I'm not going to lie. We could lose three in a row and be straight down towards that smaller places in the league and you could be really angry. I know I was quite upset where we were in the league. But then looking at the league table, it isn't that bad. And, well, I'm going to be honest. Yes, we should be getting the automatics. But... Does it matter if we do? Because if we go on a great run and win all the games within a month, then we could seriously be challengers for the top three. It really isn't that important at the moment. We still, if we get by, we don't lose too many, but we still win a decent amount, then we should be fine this season. And the final person to comment was Boss DVG Gaming. Nice name, by the way. And he said... Do you think without Morrison, we will be in the relegation zone? And well, to that, I'm going to have to say no. Morrison isn't that important. He can't last 90 minutes most of the time, and that is due to his age. Now, that being said, Morrison is an important player, but he's going to have to start more and more from the bench. And I think if you twisted this and said, do you think without Aiden O'Brien, then maybe that might be the case. Aiden has done really well this season. Some of you like him, some of you don't. But the way I see it is... My dad keeps complaining about Aiden O'Brien saying he's not a very good player, but he does work to get the ball back. And well, he's still quite young. He's still learning things and he's got more goals than he did last season. I hope Aiden O'Brien challenges for our top goal scorer. I really do, especially this season. It could be really good for him. Now let's take a look at our weekly installment of the Lone Watch. The first player that we'll be taking a look at is the goalkeeper, David Ford. He featured in Portsmouth's 3-2 win over Newport County. Ford quite clearly didn't keep it. A clean sheet I'm not gonna lie there but he did make quite a few saves allowing Pompey to come from behind to get the win the next player is young defender Rian Bray who is on loan to Jimmy Bollard's Leatherhead and well it was a great day for Rian as he got the match winning goal and their 2-1 win over the Metropolitan Police and to top it off that was Rian's first ever senior goal so congratulations for that from one younger player to another, we move on to Paul Rooney, who featured for Torquay United, who had a disaster at the back, conceding three goals in 20 minutes to allow Forest Green back into the game. However, Torquay had the last laugh in that game, getting another goal and winning the match for free. Paul Rooney came on as a substitute, with Torquay having the one-goal lead. The final player is Paris Cohen Hall, who featured the full 90 minutes for Wickham Wanderers, and the winger didn't have any effect on the game with scoring or assist in, in their free all draw with the team at the top, Plymouth Argyle. Let's take a look at the two matches that Millwall played, with the first being the 3-1 win against Cholton Athletic. In this match, I would say in terms of creating the chances, Millwall and Cholton were equal. However, Millwall had much more on target and, well, they took their chances more. And, well, I've got to say, though... Cholton's goal was quite an impressive one if you take the time to re-watch it and watch it a couple of times. Now, if you are looking for the best goal in the game, you've got to look no further than the 12-yard volley by Steve Morrison and how far the ball travelled to him. It was really good and really hard, I would imagine, to do. Now, with this game, Mill's defence started to look like a well-oiled unit and, well, I'm going to be honest, despite having some of the players only featuring their first game, which obviously was Cummins, and then Hutchinson not really getting more football, I really think that the game was great for the back line. And the atmosphere made the match much more enjoyable for a fan to watch. And, well, it took to the 40th minute for the match really to kick start with Mills' goals coming from Aidan O'Brien and a double from Steve Morrison, who is actually doing really well against Cholton. I think he has a great track record against them, which, if I remember rightly, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, Steve Morrison's last five games against Cholton have now had six goals in it. So do correct me if I'm wrong with that, but I think it's something like that. And the assists for the goals came from Sean Cummins, for the Aiden O'Brien goal, Williams for the Morrison's first goal, and Fred for Morrison's second goal. The second game that Mill played was their 2 0 win against Swindon Town at home. It was a great moment, obviously, to keep the clean sheet, and to be honest, I think our defence really dealt with the, most of their threats. There were a few wobbly moments, I'm going to be honest, but we seemed to survive them. And honestly, Swindon didn't perform the worst I've seen a team come down to the den, and they were unlucky at points. And if they had a goal scorer like Nicky Eose, 
a player that scored a lot of goals for them last season that they sold to Cholton. I think that they could have done some real damage against us. But obviously, they don't really have that finisher. And well, Millwall don't really have a finisher as well. Despite Gregory getting two goals, we had plenty of chances and we didn't really take any of them. And I really think that had we taken more, we would have definitely have done a lot better in that game. And well, Swindon did have to clear one off the line. So that kind of says how the game went for us. That leads me on to player of the week. And this player would have had to have featured for both games against Cholton and Swindon. Now, the reason I'm picking this player, well, let's quickly just find out who he is and then I'll talk about it afterwards. So I'm going to pick Sean Hutchinson. I think that you just have to hear me out on this one because he's been a great defender since making his full recovery from that hamstring injury. And I'm going to be honest, he's made a lot of crucial last ditch challenges and headed the ball away quite a lot. And well, I've got to say he was the best defender in the game against Swindon. And he was one of the leading players that meant to us get in the clean sheet. And he had a great performance in that tricky game against Cholton. And I think that if he proves himself in this one against Gillingham, which is, again, another tricky rivalry game, then he could prove what he's worth is to Millwall fans and really go down in history for Millwall. Well, not literally history, but, you know, he could go down as a great defender for us. And finally, we've come to the final section of the podcast. Yes, that's right. It's time for the Millwall news. And the first bit of news comes from Millwall manager Neil Harris, who says that Millwall will have to battle with other clubs to bring in some of their transfer targets and says that this could mean that they will still be active come the end of the transfer window as teams sign players and then allow some other players to leave. So Millwall might have to keep a careful eye on targets and players that become available during that time for transfer. Another news story is also by Neil Harris, as he said that some players will want to leave Millwall to get football time. And well, some of the names that come to mind when we talk about this in recent weeks is Greg Wilde who said that he probably wants to go get some football and Chris Twaddock who has said he wants to go out alone and chances are there will be a couple of other younger players who want to go out alone to gain some experience. Steve Morrison has announced he's in the middle of his coaching A license and says that while he's actually playing some time at football while he's still going at Millwall he wants to complete it. He's still quite a while away but he wants to complete it before he finishes playing football and he still has no intentions of finishing with Millwall considering his contract ends in 2018 which is still quite a while away. Morrison has also added that he would move abroad if the right option became available because as a coach you have to get all the experience you can get. Now the final story comes from Neil Harris as he said he's happy with the new defenders that have come into his team adding that Tony Craig looks good as a left back in his new position and that Sean Cummins has added a level head and years of experience plus has allowed Marlon Romeo to get that break and so it has been pretty good and I think that he is really happy with the fact that we've got two good centre backs that seem to have mixed really well together in Byron Webster and then Sean Hutchinson and well the clean sheet was really helpful as well because Mill haven't really kept that many in the game and well Hutchinson's returned and really helped the team in the last two games. So that is all we got time for for today. Do feel free to put your questions and opinions in the comments section for the next Talk to Wall. However, before I go, don't forget to put your score predictions for the Gillingham match on Friday and that away game to AFC Wimbledon on the Monday in the comments section as next week I'll be covering the game and highlighting the good and bad points. Also, while you're down there, don't forget to tell your, me your opinions of the match and Millwall as a whole. So like, comment, subscribe. And obviously, I will either be seeing you in the next Talk to Wall or in that special Talk to Wall video. But until then, goodbye.